Hello everyone. Uh, I am Priyanka Shinde oh, and I am yeah. the organizer of uh, EPC community. So now I'm able to hear the audio. Not too much. So I wonder if we can start. Okay. So uh, we can start the webinar. Uh, sorry for that kind of issues. <laughs> you know how tech technology could be. So uh, let me introduce myself. And uh, I'm uh, Sebastiano Galazzo, and uh, Microsoft uh, MVP for uh, AI technology. And uh, I deal uh, with artificial intelligence since 20 years so far. And so I did a lot of studies about uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence as much more hacking uh, the algorithms. Uh, today I'm CTO uh, in a company, in an AI company uh, based in Italy, Milan and Pordenone, named the System Evo. And we are focused on uh, uh, research on AI and for, uh, natural language. Processing. So, our algorithms are something new in this year, uh, of, uh, having a, a deal with machine learning algorithms and uh, uh, something new that is related to vulnerabilities on machine learning because uh, nowadays uh, everybody are uh, happy and amazed by uh, these new technologies but uh, nobody wants to hear something. So basically the webinar is split into two parts. The first part is related uh, to uh, best practices and the second part is uh, uh, focused on vulnerabilities, where I will show you how it could be easy to work uh, a, service, a cognitive service uh, using no code, just um, Adobe Photoshop, GIMP, or if you want even Paint, Microsoft Paint. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware of um, how machine learning algorithms works. But in, uh, with a brief introduction about uh, the dead of uh, uh, machine learning or the perception. Uh, this is why um, this technology was born in uh, the early 50s. So there is nothing new. Okay. And uh, uh, a, a lot of people believe that machine learning uh, uh, is something uh, that is born a few years ago, but that's not true. The map behind machine learning, uh, power, the power AI, uh, old, uh, very, very, very old. And uh, there's no magic, okay? It's just a matter of sum and multiplications. 
uh, as you can see here, everything was started inspired. We were inspired by human brain. So the perceptron is, uh, of course, a cell that acts like uh, um, um, a trigger where uh, if a, a signal, uh, if he is excited by a, a signal or there is an input, uh, is, uh, um, is it triggered or not, and this, this signal can pass between one neuron to another uh, with a system called the synapses. And in this way, everything works like uh, more or less a big transistor or a big CPU. Uh, uh, we, we know very few things about our brain, and this is just a math model uh, who, who, who were inspired. The, uh, the model that you can see on the right, where the idea basically is this one. Uh, there is an input that uh, its value could be between zero and one, in the simple case, and uh, um, it's up to you to assign a meaning or a value to each uh, input, each input that is named neuron. Uh, maybe you know uh, the game that is able to predict what are you thinking, and uh, it does some questions. So, for example, character, yes or not, and so on. Each kind of this input uh, trigger or not the input of the neuron. If it's true, the signal passes. Else, of course, not. And uh, uh, this is stimulated by a weight between the connection of one neuron to another. So the act of training, basically, is to find uh, this weight. Okay. Everything. What? Sorry. Hello? Sorry? Oh. Uh, because uh, I have a very good... Yeah. Okay. Is it better? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we can cont continue. Okay. Sorry again for that. And uh, I'm not able to see all messages. So I guess that. Okay. So, um, we can continue, just a moment, perfect. So, the idea uh, is uh, um, uh, the, the, this kind of math model, so it is able to predict. So, everything is uh, uh, focused to predict something. And uh, is uh, a function like the one that you can see below. As I told you, as I told you, uh, this is the father of the main algorithms that we have nowadays, and uh, uh, it's my personal thought. Um, I split uh, this family in two parts: uh, what I call the easy way and what I call the hard way. So, the, in my opinion, the easy way. Are all algorithms that are named like logistic regression, super vector machine, and uh, uh, in the hard way, the neural networks. So, why this? In, because uh, logistic reg reg regression, super vector machine are very easy to use. And uh, um, this is also the main reason why they are so popular. But the cons is that compared to neural networks, uh, that they uh, provide a lower accuracy. 
and this is the the uh, the truth based on my experience what is named the odd way the neural network uh, they are much more complex to 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 to, uh, to, uh, to train or uh, to to deal with them and uh, uh, really believe me uh, really is very difficult when you have to deal with neural networks but if you are good uh, they provide the best result when we talk about uh, uh, the easy way uh, basically this is the system that we want to approximate so i uh, see a, a list of parameters uh, and we have to find uh, that weights uh, that uh, i told you before and this is the, the schema or of a neural network maybe a lot of you have already seen something like that so you have an input you have uh, um, one or more hidden layers and then an output. And everything is connected with everything else. So now, after this brief introduction, we can start uh, uh, with the focus of the first part. So uh, let's imagine that uh, we have this kind of problem. Okay, so uh, your customer provided uh, a list of data like that, of course, it's simplified. And uh, we have to predict uh, the willingness to vote of a political party. In uh, the leftmost column, you have the age, the, then the gender, the income, the city and the political party. So, the naive way, what could be, or what what what, what it is, uh, is to reserve, for example, four or five neurons to the age. Why this? Um, this is because, uh, of course, uh, uh, each input of the neural network. Okay. Can you see my screen? And uh, excuse me. Can anyone confirm me that uh, uh, you can, can you see my, my screen? No, we cannot. Wow. Now? Yes. Yes, we can see now. Okay. Wow, today the technology is not going to assist me. So, um, again, uh, basically, we have uh, uh, this kind of situation where we have to predict uh, if someone will vote uh, for uh, a Republican or Democrat or something else. And, and uh, basically, we have this kind of data. So the age, gender, the currency and the party. Or uh, a naive way is uh, to, uh, to reserve a number of neurons, for example, for the age. Uh, as I told you be, be, uh, before, each neuron should be something that uh, must be converted like yes or not, then zero or one. So, so for example, the first neuron could be, uh, is the age between zero and 17, two or false? Is the age uh, between uh, 18 and 24? And so on. In the same way, also, uh, we can do the same thing for the, uh, the gender for uh, the income, city, and so on. In this way, what we gain is a very big neural network with a lot of parameters. One of the biggest mistakes uh, of, the, um, of people that uh, attempt to this world is to believe that the biggest is the model, the better it is. 
this is something really wrong because it's the, the opposite. And so uh, let's see how something can be uh, improved. One technique that we can do uh, is, for example, uh, related to the age, um, to divide by 100. So in case of the age, uh, everything uh, can be reduced to one parameter. And uh, uh, the input is no more between, uh, uh, is no, is, is, sorry, is no more zero or one for each neuron, but is for one neuron a fuzzy value, okay? That is compared between zero and one. Uh, something like that could be done with the gender, okay? So uh, we can assume it, it's, it's up to you to assign a, a, a meaning to each value, but uh, for example, for zero, we can assert uh, that uh, the meaning is male. Uh, 0.5 is female, uh, and for example, one is a noun, or uh, prefer not to, to say. Uh, doesn't matter the order of uh, these values. Of course, the most important thing is that when uh, you use your model, all parameters are aligned, of course. Uh, this approach can be used uh, just when uh, you have uh, uh, very few um, variables or um, in this case, for example, uh, we have just four values, okay? male, female, other, or prefer not to say. Uh, so the gap, uh, you must be uh, uh, aware that the gap between one meaning and another is enough. Enough, based on my experience, could be uh, 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 0 0.25. In this way, the that we can use. Anyway, a better approach there is, is there, and uh, is to use the standard deviation. Why this? Please, a step back and imagine that we are uh, use the naive method, method where each neuron uh, represents uh, a slot of age. So, for example, the first neuron is between 0 and 17, the second neuron between 18 and uh, 30, and so on. Now, let's imagine that uh, we have uh, another kind of problems. So uh, to predict uh, if someone will buy a motorbike, uh, the Harley Davidson, and what is the stereotype? The stereotype who buys an Harley Davidson is uh, a male, a man, he is, he is 50, this is the stereotype, is a good income, and uh, maybe in uh, big cities, who knows? Anyway, the first three parameters are for sure the best one. But what happens if you, your data says that the best profile is a male having uh, 50 years, but you have uh, another um, profile uh, that uh, matches all parameters, but for example, his age is 48. 48, it means that he falls uh, in another slot, in the, the, in the slot uh, before. And uh, could happen, I say could, but believe me, in the real life, it always happen. That he falls uh, in, the, in the slot that makes uh, it the wrong classification because uh, uh, is uh, um, because of uh, this kind of data says that who falls in that slot, for example, between 40 and 48, uh, will not buy an uh, Alec Davidson. But if, if you are a male, if you have a good income, if you are in the correct area, uh, ge geographic area, 
and you are just 48, you are in the profile. You are a good profile, but not from a math point of view. So, what I, uh, using the standard deviation, we can improve a lot the precision of our model using a method that is named one of C uh, minus one. I don't know why this method, but anyway, it works. I used it a lot of times. I hope that everybody uh, are confident uh, of, um, about the um, standard devi deviation. Anyway, basically, uh, please forgive me for of, uh, math people, but it just for simplification is a value that uh, tell us uh, how much it is close to the average. And so we have first to calculate the average of all values in this way. And let's say that we have a example of 8.12. So the value that we have to use as input for our neuron in our neural network is V first, where V first is equal to the value minus the average divided by the standard deviation. And in this case, the value could be minus uh, 1.23. As you can see, the value is no more 0 or 1 or between 0 and 1. It is something that's really strange. And much more, we divided by 100, for example, and uh, the age was uh, uh, 43, the value was then uh, 0.43. And uh, this is some, something also comfortable because uh, uh, we can understand the data. If we read this parameter, we can understand them. But in this case, of course, not because nobody is able to understand what it means uh, uh, minus 123. But this value is much more useful to fuel your neural network. So another technique is to use uh, uh, binary compression. So let's focus uh, for a while uh, to the city. Um, oh, uh, we, I, I will talk about Italian cities, and uh, it's just an example, but uh, it's for in Italy, we have more or less uh, 8,100 uh, cities. One of the big mistakes that was done by a team that I met years ago was uh, uh, to use 1,000 of neurons to represent the cities. And this is totally wrong. The worst thing that you can do. So, using this technique, we can reduce a lot the amount of neuron that we can use. How? Two power 13 uh, is this value, 8192. What it means, uh, sorry, that is the uh, closest value in binary uh, uh, that, that, that exceed the number that we need in this case, uh, more than 8,000. So using uh, a mask for each city like that, for, uh, for example, Milan, all uh, zeros for Turin, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on, where each mask uh, is 13 neurons with this approach, we can represent 
more than 8,000 values. In this way, we can reduce a lot the amount of the neuron of our math model. So, what means that? Of course, uh, this is an example. And uh, uh, the, the final goal is that working on data, we can, as sometimes we can uh, simplify our model so much that could happen that we don't need even to use the machine learning. Because in this case, was just five parameters so far, or 10 parameters. Five parameters, 10 parameters could be something that can be solved using a list of if then else. Of course, it's a provocation. But uh, uh, I, uh, my goal is that you are aware that you don't have to use always machine learning. Maybe that uh, working on uh, managing your data, modify your, your, your data in a smart way, you can solve your problem in any way. Keep in mind that uh, machine learning uh, is static. So the that is in output is uh, a percentage. And uh, in this way, you can improve uh, a lot uh, your accuracy. But uh, mm, much more, what I want to say is that data must be manipulated to be made understandable by the machine, not for humans. Because this is one of our biggest mistakes when dealing with machine learning. We try to modify data, uh, if we modify data, uh, to be uh, in, we, in something that is still un understandable for us. But if you remember, what happened with the standard de deviation, you will understand that the best value, the best modifier to our, uh, with our data, not always uh, is understandable by humans. And finally, the message is that, uh, in my opinion, the 19% of the job uh, when we deal with machine learning is made by humans modify, uh, modifying data. So there is nothing smart, there is nothing intelligent so far. The machine learning is just the last final step. So nothing magic. Okay. So, we can switch uh, to the second part, or the vulnerabilities. This is uh, something interesting uh, for me and uh, that I like very much. So, let's imagine uh, that we have to deal uh, uh, with the kind of problem. So we have uh, 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 the naive way, of course, is to use uh, um, a lot of people that uh, will, uh, we, we, that checks uh, all images that are uploaded to our And we are talking about machine learning, AI, deep learning, so this is not allowed. We have to use something much powerful than the human capabilities. <coughs> Sorry. So, we can use uh, uh, the deep learning. Deep learning, 
in uh, is, is, is applied in a, a lot of field in uh, AI in machine learning but uh, works very very well and uh, um, I will uh, I will explain much better uh, but so far uh, this uh, what uh, we use uh, for image classification. Now, um, we should know how it works uh, at training, uh, uh, at training, training step. So you have uh, a, a photo, a deep convolutional neural network, and uh, uh, you perform your uh, training process until you are satisfied. So uh, this is not a webinar on uh, how you should uh, train a neural network or uh, where it is the math inside. I assert that uh, more or less uh, everybody knows uh, this kind of processes. So a step back on uh, neural networks, on convolutional neural network. Uh, so they are so powerful that uh, they can uh, uh, equal or even beat the human performance. How is done an image classification? Uh, has each input of the neural network must be between zero and one? Of course, we cannot create a, a math model for it pixel of our image would be a uh, math model that uh, um, is very, very, very big. And it, it, that's impossible. So in, in the same way that we applied our best practices in the, part, in the previous part, what we, we do is to modify our image uh, by a process that is named uh, pooling and convolution. So into small blocks in square and uh, for simplification, we apply some filters like uh, uh, the age detection of uh, that we can find in Photoshop. And uh, uh, after a resides of uh, the result. And this process uh, is uh, rep 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 repeated several, uh, several times until we have a value that can be used as input for our neural network. The filters that we use, that we, we, we use to uh, detect uh, vertical lines, uh, horizontal lines, uh, and so on. Now, we say that this kind of algorithms can equal or even outperform the human capabilities. So let's imagine that we trained our neural network. We are very satisfied and it works very, very well. But for a while, let's focus on this case. As you can see the coin in the, in the, the cone below, has uh, a sketch, has uh, uh, a yellow line. But as human, I'm still able to classify that image as coin. So if the math, the math model is able to outperform my capabilities, my ex expectation is that uh, it is still able to classify correctly this uh, image. Unfortunately, this is not always true. Let's di discover why. So, it's been discovered that if you modify some pixels or some part of the area of the image, you can trick your neural network. And uh, basically, an image that in this case is a cat 
maybe uh, modifying it with something that is not visible for, uh, for the human eye or even a very small amount, a part of the image can be classified uh, as something else, totally different. So let's try to understand why this happened. We said that uh, everything in machine learning uh, at the end uh, is uh, related to classification. And uh, uh, palette here um, can be considered like uh, an image. And uh, we have this line, this dotted line, that is a, 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 a different class classification. So, what we want to do is uh, uh, something uh, uh, like that. We want to add or in order that we can move our classification from uh, um, in another field from one field to another. So, I guess that an image is uh, uh, much more useful. This is basically what we do. We have an image, we add some noise, is something random and uh, uh, being being random we have to do more attempts and the goal is uh, to be able to classify uh, that image as something else in this case uh, a squirrel so let's see using images uh, how uh, here and uh, on the right uh, uh, there is the, the, the flow of how convolutional neural networks works. So keep in mind it. In the first step, let's imagine first to apply uh, that the process of convolutional neural Apply. We add a small amount of noise. In this case, uh, uh, the blue square. And now proceed with the process. Everything is split in this way. And uh, as you can see, when uh, with the image be before, we have we had just this area that has been modified. But in this case, our error has been propagated. Now let's continue with the process. You can see the small square again. So, there's no need to, co to continue. I guess that you understood how uh, modifying a small works, works uh, a small amount can push the red ball, uh, the red ball uh, that we saw be before from uh, one part to another of the graph and then uh, the, cla the classification. So we can propagate our error very, very easily. And this is due to how inside uh, the process works. How to do that basically is very easy. 
um, this is the steps. Okay. Um, th there is no more to, to say about that. Is basically is a wild loop, something like that. You can find on Google on um, on internet you can search for uh, something like that uh, is named the pix uh, pixel attack and uh, if, if you search for uh, machine learning uh, pixel attack uh, you will find uh, a lot of script uh, in python uh, or um, other languages so i will not focus on that because uh, um, anyway First, you can find it very, very easily, but uh, this is the easy way from uh, uh, one point of view. But using the code, asset that uh, you have the knowledge, uh, you have access to the math model that you want to hack. And this is uh, not always true. I know that in uh, cyber security, you don't have uh, to think uh, that nobody knows uh, your system. This is the biggest mistake. Uh, but in this case, uh, for, uh, someone, for example, uh, could say, OK, but I use uh, uh, the Microsoft Cognitive Services. Uh, they are hosted online in cloud, and uh, nobody can access uh, uh, To know that in cyber security, I don't have to assert uh, something like, like that, but that's it. Okay, that's true. This is the reason why I will show you how it's possible to hack a, a cognitive. The main difference. The main difference is that, uh, uh, of course, using the code, uh, we can uh, do a, a much better attack. In uh, uh, in which sense? In the sense that uh, um, is not visible by human eye. Uh, what I will show you is something that, of course, not using code, I have to proceed by attempts uh, using. But anyway, it uh, doesn't matter because if you want, for example, to upload uh, something that is not allowed to your website, mm, for, uh, like uh, adult images or who knows what, it doesn't matter if uh, there is a corner that has been modified. Okay. But before showing you a demo, uh, the first a question that could, uh, could that could be done is uh, how can we protect ourselves against these attacks? Mm, basically, there are a few things that uh, you can do. Uh, one of that. Uh, uh, could be to train a second neural network with uh, modified images, with uh, arcade images. Uh, and uh, when you perform your classification, basically you have to know if there is a, a match between the two neural networks or not. This is called adversarial training, and uh, you can believe that probably is the most reasonable defense to consider. Uh, but the truth is that a lot of researchers tried to figure out how uh, we can protect against this kind of attacks. But the real life is that there's no way. Because it's something related to the process, to the flow, to the math behind. So now uh, I will switch to the demo and uh, I will use uh, Microsoft uh, Cognitive Services. But uh, it is uh, very, very important that uh, um, the goal is 
is not to show is affected by uh, this kind of problems because everyone is affected by this kind of problems. Okay, everybody. Against, I can say, not just because I'm a Microsoft MVP, but uh, because uh, I deal with them since a lot of times, I used uh, uh, other solutions like uh, Google, uh, IBM or Amazon. And uh, I can say that so far, so far, that Microsoft services are the best, not only uh from the security point of view but also for the uh, quality of the image class classification and uh, the description so this is very important to me uh, that, that you, you understand that, that the goal is not to show how failing are uh, this kind not just because it's microsoft or could be google uh, um, Please, uh, this is very important for me. It's just to show you that uh, uh, these kind of things are easy to apply and you must be aware of that. After, it's up to you to decide uh, uh, if uh, keeping into account or not. So, Just as uh, what I did here, so uh, is to use the custom vision.ai service, is a Microsoft service uh, uh, that uh, allows you to classify uh, your images in a, your, um, in a, and to create your custom model. Um, I will not go into deep uh, about how to use uh, customvision.ai because it's really very, very easy. And I'm um, really confident that you are all developers and, uh, you may, and maybe you are already uh, users of uh, this kind of services. So it's useless uh, uh, to explain uh, how it works, uh, how, uh, sorry, how to use it. But Keep in mind uh, what I, I, I explained before, how the convolutional system works, and uh, uh, let's proceed with our demo. So, what I did is uh, uh, to upload a set of squirrel images, people, and battle. And now, let's do a quick, uh, quick test. First, okay, this is a squirrel at 100%. It works. Now, let's upload my image, and I am a people at 100%. That's great. And let's try also this image. Does the connection works? Yes. They are people at 99.5%. So the, the model works very well. Now, let's try with this image. As you can see, I'm still a people, but people at 17%, just adding this obliquous line. We cannot, we see, cannot the see the demo. Oh, no. How is possible? I will try to share again. Are you able to see? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's start again. This is uh, my image. 
and of people at 100%. It works so for one hundred percent. So it works. Uh, as you can see, I trained with this set, battle, people, and squirrels. So now upload this image. Again, as you can see, I'm a people at 17%, just adding this obliquus line. Do something different. Wow. Internet connection doesn't work. Let's try again. Okay. As you can see, I'm a bottle at 96% just adding these vertical lines. Now, what you can say, and I could understand, is that, okay, but you modified too much your image. In this way, it's uh, reasonable that the math model doesn't understand very well. Okay, that's true. And then, let's try with this image. I am a people again at 99%, hidden all my face. I don't know what you think so far, but it's very, very scary. Because, uh, okay, as human, I can understand that he's a, a, um, a person, a people, but from a math model point of view, I hidden everything. Much more than the image be before. And anyway, the classification changed it. Okay, let's try with something else. Let's try to reduce the saturation and maybe change the color of the line. In this case, I'm a people and most and 90%. This is a, a bit strange, maybe, because the image before was a, a most similar. The, I did a similar line, just changing the, the, the color, and I was a people at the 17%. What it means? It means that using the same image using the same uh, craft, the, the, the same scratch, just changing the saturation of the colors changes the classification. So far, we are we see that in image classification, the human capabilities, and it's enough to change the situation affect the classification value or to hide a part of the image and to uh, change com definitively the uh, classification. But let's go with another image. So what I did here, I used the the 99% and in my opinion what I thought is uh, uh, to modify some key parts of the image so the neck uh, 
the heap, um, and so on. But the algorithm was so strong to understand anyway that they were people. Uh, so a quick recap, what I did is uh, to use uh, GIMP as a software editor, and of course uh, you have to do some tries. Okay, that's all. Now, let's change our modifier. So basically, what happened? I modified the side of the image and not the main characters and uh, from uh, 9 to 70 percent and if we image that uh, this is uh, something uh, is not allowed is provided uh, like uh, adult uh, we are classified but we are in the right way to uh, 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 to work this uh, and an, an image like shows anyway the content I want. Now let's do something uh, like uh, a different. So, and uh, now we, uh, we have the same image, we changed it. Yeah. Now we have the same image, we changed just the saturation, and again, the classification changed is 96%. Okay, finally we change approach. This one. And guys, this image is classified as battle with this accuracy. As you can see, I don't touch it, the, the, the key content. So, oh, not table, share the screen again. Wow. <sighs> okay, now you should be able to see. Yes, the screen. Way. With this image, we changed the saturation, and they are people at 96%. Now, the, the same image, but with different lines, they are images, they are bottled at 88%. And uh, I haven't touched the something so what it means that we uh, we shouldn't uh, use uh, this kind of services of course not i can understand from a point uh, from some point of view but to see my screen now I hope that you can see my screen. Mm, I have no feedback. Yes, we can see. 
Okay, great. So uh, the, the message is not that you shouldn't use uh, these kind of services. Of course, you have to do. But you must be a mobile application and uh, is not important uh, the, the, uh, the check or uh, the image cl classification um, in your, don't waste your, your time uh, to find uh, systems uh, to avoid uh, this kind of problems but if you are a bank if you, uh, you if you have a very important client and uh, something like that uh, as uh, to upload uh, audio content or uh, some specific images uh, and uh, um, you must be aware that something like that can be done and it is really, really easy to do that. much more uh, but for example when uh, uh, we talk about autonomous drive uh, honestly uh, you, you can find uh, on, uh, on internet uh, some papers that shows how could be a problem uh, what i show uh, in this field because uh, we have done uh, uh, some test where people put a sticker on uh, sing, uh, road signals and the car was not able to classify correctly the, uh, what, it, what, what it is. And uh, it's very, very, very dangerous. Or, for example, uh, another test showed how uh, putting some special uh, on the road, um, not visible to human beings, uh, was not able to understand the sticker uh, that were uh, on the ground. And so, of course, uh, this is really, really dangerous, but is it your field? I don't know. It's up to you. So if you deal with uh, special big uh, customers uh, like uh, banks or with autonomous drive, OK, be aware of this kind of problem or this kind of vulnerabilities. And you have to know that there is nothing that you can do. Else you can continue to use them. Uh, find something that you can do from a mat view, and uh, um, we can do really, really nothing. Maybe that uh, uh, we can use, uh, for example, some tools that in this case uh, are not machine learning. So, for example, in image classification, maybe that uh, uh, we came back to the 19s and to use, for example, uh, the OpenCV uh, uh, um, together with the machine learning, because the machine learning is really powerful, but you need to, uh, must be helped by something else when we talk about uh, a security. But not the rest. And open CV that uh, uh, the machine learning, but the old system that uses, for example, vectors. So, in the uh, if you imagine a system is really able to outperform the human capabilities, and you use another system like OpenCV using uh, vector classification together and 
when you try, when you attempt to classify an image and it, it's really important to you, you can check the result of both system. And if they doesn't match, maybe there is an alert. Uh, so um, this is uh, the best that you can do when we talk about vulnerabilities uh, in a computer vision or in image classification. Then uh, maybe you believe uh, uh, that this kind of problem can happen just on uh, uh, image classification in uh, by dimensional problems, uh, but that's not true. Because you can say, OK, but uh, I don't use uh, uh, images for something else, for example, for natural language processing. And uh, OK, but I'm not affected uh, by this kind of problem because nobody can upload uh, some content that's true. but also uh, you must be aware that uh, language processing uh, um, it's enough that, uh, that, uh, and you can act you can trick, trick uh, the answer of your model. And I will show you something like that. So uh, this is a comparator that we created. In a, on the right column, uh, there is our algorithm that, of course, performs well as uh, it will not be there. And uh, um, here there is the compare uh, between in, uh, Google, Michael, and here we have some sentences. The, uh, the one written in bold are uh, the sentences that has been painted. Now, to focus uh, on uh, which algorithm is better. This is not the goal. The goal is, uh, how, uh, is uh, how it could be easy uh, to have better results uh, using um, NLP algorithms. Uh, for example, the first one is uh, the main, the main focus is, uh, do you have a specific account for professionals? OK. And of course, uh, it works. Now, the third question is, uh, does your bank offer a deal for family members? Everybody, if you use the trained uh, uh, text, everything is okay. But what if I use uh, a sentence, something that is also inside the first question? Everybody are wrong. Why it happened? Of course, if I train this sentence, all system will be able uh, to classify it correctly. But what happened uh, if uh, someone asks for something that uh, has not been trained? It's a real life uh, problem that happened. Uh, for, um, to a chatbot using one of the services here. Uh, 
ask the two hour chat bot please sing a classified this and then you as you odd 100%. I don't know why it happened. And uh, re replied in a bad way to our customer. Uh, the problem was that that customer was the boss of the bank that was willing to buy uh, at this product. And uh, why it happened? For the same reasons I explained be before. So doesn't matter if the problem is a uh, two, 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 problem so like image classification one D problem like uh, you must be aware that any problems can create. In some cases, uh, you can do something much more to, uh, to adjust, uh, to reduce this amount of problems. In other cases, there is, there is nothing to do. And so from, from a math point of view, and so you uh, must be aware and to find uh, uh, some uh, some stuff to avoid or to reduce uh, these kind of problems. So so far uh, that's all for me and. Um, happened about the connections so i don't know we did a lot of tests and of course the day of the webinar there were problems anyway i hope that you enjoyed and uh, that's all from uh, from my side does anyone have any questions <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I am from Agada Academy of Engineering, a uh, third year student. Uh, I have one Sorry, question. Can you hear, uh, hear him? Hello. Hello. Can you just type yeah. your question in the chat box? Yes, it's okay. better. So, I will, I will, because okay. I'm not able to hear very, very well. Sorry. Uh, type of everyone if anyone have any questions please write it down in the chat box Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes. So you get my question. Yeah. can you able to see uh, his question? No, I'm not able to see. I just see I have one question about how to reduce the epoch rate. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, He's asking that question. Yes. Is this the question? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, of course, it depends uh, on your data, um, but uh, so I don't uh, recognize your voice. I do. Uh, the, what, what I did. Uh, 
a lot of time uh, is to of input and much more uh, the number of hidden layers and the size of the hidden layers. But uh, the main um, uh, so you say I, that the I, number I, of uh, neural network in a one layer, you can add more of this now. And that way you reduce the size of epoxy rate. Should I go to right or wrong? Uh, please, can you repeat uh, the first part? Uh, I think uh, we can uh, increase the number of uh, neutral uh, neural network on first, first layer or second layer to reduce the epoxy rate. Should we do like that? No, if you increase, if you increase the number of neurons, and the layers, I don't think it is what uh, realized that. You hear 